So uh, tell me about a Bennington education. Right. Um, well, we don't have uh, majors. We have concentrations or focuses. And the best metaphor for it is an hourglass. Mm. So you show up your first term, freshman year, and you're encouraged to explore, to take whatever you want. I mean, everybody's undeclared. Um, <laughs> and you're given an advisor. And you meet with your advisor every week, bounce ideas off of them, talk about where you think your education's going, how you're feeling about it, whether you've confirmed your beliefs and interest in a subject area or not. Um, you know, talk about FWT ideas for your first FWT. And, um, that's the winter term? Yeah, that's the winter term, okay. field work term. Field work term. And you, <coughs> you write a first term reflection essay, hand that into your advisor, they review it, you know, just to put a nice cap on that term. You do your first FWT, everybody writes a fieldwork term essay for when they mm -hmm. get back. And then in the spring, um, you're again encouraged to try new things and explore. And then your first term of your sophomore year, you have to write your first plan essay. And that's what the Bennington education is, it's the plan. The plan. Um, so you initiate the plan process. Mm -hmm. And the plan process is meet with your advisor, talk a little bit, reflect on your education, and then you write about a three to five page essay saying, okay, so I have these concepts that I'm very, very interested in through my studies here. And I think that these areas of study will help me best explore this. Um, or you say, um, I'm very interested in these areas of study because of the concepts that arise and are moving to me as I study them. Um, and you go draft it with your advisor and you submit it to the dean's office and they pick out a group of two to three faculty members based on your areas of studies that will meet with you and your advisor in a planned committee meeting and that is your planned committee and they decide whether to pass it whether it needs revision or whether uh, they reject it and say you need to start over and redraft this so how did that work for you uh, um, just for me, walk me through the through <coughs> your own process so i walked in uh, my plan was very different it was very much in the social sciences Mm -hmm. um, when I submitted my first plan and the way it worked was they said okay we really like where you're going and how you think but we don't think this is ready to pass so we would like you to revise it for next term um, it was about a half hour meeting it was very constructive um, there wasn't a lot there wasn't negative feedback in the way that it was damaging to the way I thought about my education. Um, instead, it was challenging, mm -hmm. which is very important. Um, as much as Bennington relies on the student's sense of self-motivation and discipline, um, is not afraid to interfere and push students in certain directions. So that's what happened. I got pushed. Um, this term, I have just submitted my new plan um, based on the experiences I had my last term. Mm -hmm. which have been the most meaningful to me. So, after after this term, I will go into my junior year, and by the end of my junior year, I will have to have my plan concretely decided. Mm -hmm. That is when I will definitely know what advanced work I will pursue my senior year, regardless of the advanced work I've pursued in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and the plan committee will tell me, okay, so, great, this is past. Um, now we think that you should look in this area, even though it's away from your two, like your bread and butter. Like that's when I'll start taking mostly recording and literature. But they'll say, why don't you take this printmaking class to think about how mm -hmm. words can look on a page, how you tell a story differently, or take a sound installation culture, sculpture class and figure out how to make that mm -hmm. work for you. So, so they'll push you in another direction. In other directions mm -hmm. to try to incorporate it um, and see where that takes me. And that's when I can start doing things like tutorials. And a tutorial is, you realize that you're really passionate about this idea, um, but it isn't offered in the course listing. So you approach a faculty member and say, I have me, or I have me and a friend, or me and a group of people, a small group, that are interested in pursuing this. Will you do this with us? And we will all have um, a piece of writing or a project. Mm -hmm that will be the culminating moment of this. And if they say yes and the dean passes it, then you do a tutorial and you get to work intimately with that teacher, mm -hmm. which is 
incredible because we already have on an average of between 10 and 12 students per class. Um, and uh, even more helpful because of the fact that we follow the teacher practitioner model. So everybody that is a teacher here doesn't have to be. My advisor is a great example, Joe Holt. He basically was one of the first members of like the Silicon Valley scene as far as programming goes. So he helped write the first six versions of Mac OS, iMovie, iDVD, mm -hmm. Photoshop, Adobe, all of those things. Um, for example, when you're changing the contrast on your, you know, you drag a little bar across, right. he wrote that original piece of programming. So We all take for granted now. Exactly, exactly. Which is, I, when I found that out, I like, <laughs> flipped out. Um, <laughs> so that adds two things to the Bennington education. One is that the teachers really care about being here because they don't have to be. Right. They are very interested in the gift of teaching of what it is to impart. Two, um, it means that we learn about what it is to actually be involved in that area, which is part of the field work term, mm -hmm. part of going to school here, part of doing tutorials, intimate work, advanced work, things like that. Um, so we end up with a very strong sense of what it is to be doing what we want out in the world. I mean, we graduate with an almost full resume Mm -hmm. of FWTs and connections on where to live, both from ourselves and from our friends. Um, so, back to so the skinny part of the hourglass. Mm -hmm. when you've decided everything. When you do all that stuff junior year and decide that. It then starts to branch out again at the end of your senior year uh, when they say, okay, uh, have some fun. Mm -hmm. uh, totally go wild with experimenting. I mean, you'll be working on your thesis or your project and that is required, but you know, take the one class that has been offered that you've always missed taking because of whatever happened. Mm -hmm. You know, go for it. See how that informs your work. And then you graduate and you receive a uh, Bachelor of Liberal Arts degree with a focus in a specific area or two. Mm -hmm. So that's generally how the Benedictine education looks.